Ready, boys? Aye, aye, Captain. I'm going to light it up. Welcome to another episode of Bet the Bus. I am your host, Payoff Willie, a.k.a. Year 10, a.k.a. Year 10. I'll say that again, Year 10, boys. We're making cash. We're getting laid. We're getting paid. Before we start, as always, let, let us all uh, bow our heads and uh, say a little prayer to the gambling gods. Lord, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change the courage to make the bets that we can this weekend, Lord, the wisdom to know that it ultimately does not matter. Uh, for thine is the kingdom, the power, um, this Barstow Sportsbook, O Holy One, yours forever, living one day at a time, enjoying every each bet at a time, Lord, accepting the hardships and the, the losses that as we go and walk on this pathway to peace, taking it just as, D, as Jesus did, the, the losses that he had to face, not as we would have it because we wouldn't want to do go through all that, but trusting that you will make all the things right if we just surrender to your will and win them all this weekend so that we can reasonably be happy after the weekend's over, uh, so we can be extremely happy with you forever in the next life, Lord, and live in abundance. Amen. Boys, Amen. I feel good. If you can see, I feel like I look good. I feel like I look decent right now. I'm dressed in a little bit, a little bit of a Peaky Blinders fit with a little mix of Miami on my, on my face with the shades. As Deion Sanders, the great Deion Sanders would say, you look good, you feel good. You feel good, you play good. You play good, they pay good. They pay good, that means you're living good. And if you're living good, that means you're betting with Payoff Willie because we're on an absolute fucking terror. We're on a winning streak. Uh, well, you know, winning streak as in we've been positive for the last three or four weekends in a row. Jack, can you please debrief everybody on the success that we've been having over here at Bet the Bus? Yes, we are living in the green. Uh, our accountant is extremely happy with us. But the record last week for week six, we were four and two in the NFL and three and two in college football. I mean, financially solvent, as they would say. We're absolutely on a Will Compton tear. Dude, I love that. And if, I know it says three and two college football. If you're following me closely on the internet, on Twitter, I did release another little pick, game day, the day of, the over on Tennessee, Alabama, which hit, which actually brought me to four and two. But you guys got to pay co close attention to payoff, Willie. So I'm, I'm a little agile out there. Before we get going, I do want to say, I've never seen a board so clearly this weekend. Yes, we've dropped two games in the NCAA and the NFL. Yes, we won four on top of that. But JP, as you would say, we're not trying to be good. We're trying to be fucking great. And I've never seen a board so clearly, and I'll tell you why. Number one, I started off the morning before I got cleaned up, a nice workout. I took a shot of proper wild. And I've never had so much productivity. Is it productivity or productivity? Productivity? I've never had so much productivity in my morning, studying the board, studying the analytics that Mitch would give us, the focus, the energy. Can we just roll? Can, can, we, can we do the ad right now? Can we run the ad? We might as well Let's run up. the ad. Let's run the fucking ad because we have a presenting sponsor. Their name is Proper Wild, a clean energy shot. And as he pulls this ad up, I'm going to keep rambling about it. There's no artificial bullshit in these things. There's no, uh, 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 what's the word? What's the Preservatives. word? Preservatives. Preservatives, no bullshit artificial sweeteners. No, none of that. This is clean energy. You guys, you guys need caffeine, coffee throughout the entire day. I do. No, I love coffee. However, if you want some clean energy that's going to boost your morale, that's going to boost your brain, that's going to boost your energy you find that with proper wild they have some peach mango matter of fact uh, i know we got hey i know we got a shot of the week and i know you need to save it for a shot of the week i've had one of these this morning i'm gonna take one right now for you and i'm gonna take one when we do our shot of the week but it's clean all day energy designed to boost your energy focus and pro uh, productivity uh proper wild small two and a half ounce shots are great to take on the go, saving you lots of time when you need that long and lasting energy. And we're going to need this weekend, boys, because the board is big. The board is big. There's a journey that goes into every weekend. Guys, we only get so many opportunities per year. In college, I think we get like, like 10, to, 10 to 13 opportunities per year in college. In the NFL, 
we get at least 17, then we get in the playoffs. Every weekend matters. If you guys have been betting against me and fading payoff, Willie, God bless you. You're not winning, but you can always turn it around and jump on board. We have a great board this weekend. Set the standard. We set the standard. The standard is good right now. We're chasing greatness, but the standard's just good right now, but we're chasing greatness. Um, with that, we've got to look at Friday. Everybody gets excited on Friday. Everybody gets excited on day one. Not everybody's as excited on day three because you might go through some turmoil. You might go through some losses. You got to set a standard because if you don't set a standard for yourself, you're going to fall to your feelings. Your feelings always fail you. These facts that I'm about to deliver, they don't care about your feelings. But day, you got to set a standard because day one, Will Compton is not going to feel the same as day three. Will Compton at the end of the weekend after taking a couple losses. But you find that standard. You bet with the boys. You're going to keep moving forward. Your feelings, yes, they're going to they're gonna lie to you all the time. You got to trust the standard that we're laying out because we're laying out a great formula. You got to ask, why not us and why not now? This weekend, it starts. Kick us off, brother. JP, kick us off, Jack. I don't know who it's going to be, but kick us off with this NCAA slate because I love what we're seeing right now. Dude, arguably my favorite pick we've ever had right here. And it's Syracuse at Clemson. We're, we're dabbling with the spread a little bit, Will. Tell us what we're doing exactly with it. This is a great game because... I want to just say it right now. I think Clemson, they're a bunch of fucking frauds. Yes, I know they're college kids trying to get a degree and make it outside of, you know, maybe not playing pro ball like 99% of the kids don't do, but they're a bunch of fucking frauds sitting there at number five. Syracuse leads the ASC by, leads the ACC by only allowing 13.2 points per game. They're the best defense in the ACC. Clemson, they haven't really played anybody. All these teams in the ACC, there's a few good ones. Uh, Syracuse, I respect. Wake Forest, I respect. Uh, I think Duke, we respect this beginning of the year. I don't know if we still respect We them. don't respect them. We don't, yeah, we don't respect those motherfuckers either. But Clemson's in the top five. We don't know how they're doing it. But Syracuse, they have a lot of momentum to build on. They're 4-1 against the spread this season, only giving up more than 20 points in any game this season at all. I, I don't even know if I made sense right there trying to get that out of my mouth. But They've only, they haven't given up over 20 points on any game this year. Both teams are top two in rush defense in the ACC. Syracuse held Clemson to 116 rush yards last year. I think they do it again. There's a lot of juice. They're hot right now. Syracuse has a lot of confidence. They have a couple wins. They're coming off a big NC State win. They beat Purdue earlier in the year. I know people are like, oh, it's just Purdue. Well, who in the fuck has Clemson played? Nobody. The spread right now is plus 13 and a half in favor of yeah, obviously it's in favor of Clemson, but we got 13 and a half points. I'm not saying Syracuse is going to win this game, but Syracuse is going to cover because they know how to play defense. They know how to run the football. And as long as you do that, keep control of the clock, you're going to have a, you're going to have a two score game. You're probably going to have a one score game uh, wherever they're playing. And I think it's in Clemson, but we're going to take uh, Syracuse plus 13 and a half this weekend. I love that fucking pick. I love that pick as well. And for some extra money, go ahead and hit the money line on it as well. I have some inside info in Greenville, South Carolina. Next, Will, we got Purdue at Wisconsin. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Did you just say you got uh, inside info in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, so with Clemson? So you're just saying you're going to take the money line with Syracuse? Yes, sir. Hey, boys. 1-800-GAMBLER. Go at your own risk with our boy JP back there. He might know something that we don't, but we're going to go with the plus 13 and a half. I know how to make money. <laughs> now, Will, Purdue at Wisconsin, make me more money with this next pick. Please. All right. Wisconsin has been a different team since they fired Paul Chris. Wisconsin has won 15 straight against Purdue. I think that's all you need to know because Wisconsin is favored at minus two and a half. It's not a big spread. They're playing in Madison. It's going to be fucking rocking. What's that little, what's that? It's jump around where they're jumping around in the crowd. Hey, hey, oh, oh, oh. jump around. You, Those were, that was shout and jump around. Either way, they're going to be fucking dancing, celebrating because Wisconsin's going to whoop their ass. Purdue is a good, respectable football team, but Nebraska took it out of them last weekend. Nebraska gave them a fight of their life last weekend. Wisconsin is also 12-3 and three against the spread in their last 15 against Purdue. Look for Wisconsin to let everything loose, boys. They fired their coach. They're not playing for a whole lot. They're in the tougher side of the uh, division in the Big Ten and the conference. Yeah, they're in the tougher. Hey, guys, spread it out, man. They're in the yeah, tougher the division. Shot. Yeah. Side, they're in the tougher side of the Big Ten Conference. They're, you know, they're, they can let it all fly. They can have trick plays. They can have fake punts. They, they can have trick plays on offense. More trick plays. <laughs> More trick plays. More trick plays. That easy, boys. Oh, yeah, Hammer. A minus two and a half. Wisconsin, Madison. Let's fucking go. We're two and zero so far. About to make it three and zero. 
We got two teams debuting on the board this week. Texas A&M at South Carolina. <laughs> Will. <laughs> oh, oh, I just puked money right there. JP, we're going to need you on this because South Carolina, I don't know how I'm feeling about this game. They only got A&M favored by three and a half. Minus three and a half favored by A&M. That's kind of a spin zone for me. I know South Carolina's coming off a big win, but they're also one and six following, one and six against the spread following a win. They kind of have a hangover. They don't have a lot of success ever. So when they do, they kind of lapse a little bit the next week. A wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Let me get some of these stats out before I give you the mic. A&M allows 189.6 rush yards per game. Marshawn Lloyd, I know you think he's a stud. He could have a day. The formula's out there. App State did it. Run the ball, control the clock, make the game close at the end. App State pulled it off. Then I think somebody else almost pulled off. A few teams almost pulled off against A&M. The formula's out there. Do we need to not sleep on the cocks this weekend? Give us something, JP, because I'm nervous, and I'm literally going to put this in the hands of our South Carolina game cock himself, the cock commander of the year, JP Hovey. Talk to us, Hove. Well, I believe, I believe you're a great gambler, but you're looking too much at the numbers right now, too much at the stats and facts. This game has nothing to do with stats and facts. This game has everything to do with Shane Beamer, Marshawn Lloyd, and Spencer Rattler. People forget preseason Heisman favorite. This week, he's coming out, no pause, and we're gonna bring that money line. I'm hitting the money line on South Carolina. Hang on, I you juiced me. You juiced me until you said, who's a, who's a preseason Heisman candidate? Spencer Rattler. <laughs> Let's not fucking get ahead of ourselves. The, the, the videos are out there on the type of player he is. So you can't judge him at 17. You can't judge him at 17, but you can get a nice look in the box. I know he's a, he, wasn't he like a preseason Heisman candidate last year too before he wet the bed in Oklahoma and got traded basically? Yeah, you can call it the transfer portal. They got, they had to trade that motherfucker. They had to trade that motherfucker. Hey, here you go again with these facts. I'm just what saying. What I tell you. I'm just saying. I, you know, JP respectfully, fuck you. I'm taking AM minus three and a half at South Carolina. Yeah, Ole Miss and LSU are next. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is an awesome fucking game. Hey, hang on. Is this? Put that shit on. Where are we at? <laughs> we are not fans of AB here, but we will put that shit on when needed. Um, Ole Miss at LSU or Kansas State TCU? Which, which, are, which is our shot of the week? Because we got to have a proper wild shot of the week. We got to see this as a clear, productive, energy-focused win. Brought to you by Proper Wild, and I don't want to miss because right now we're one and zero with Proper Wild on board. I do not want to let them down. I don't want to let the people down. Do we go LSU beating Ole Miss? I know they're favored by one and a half, but Ole Miss started as the favorites uh, minus two and a half. Now it's LSU minus one and a half. Mitch taught us. He taught us a few episodes ago. When the line moves like that, that means a lot of people are betting in favor of LSU. I think there's a lot of optimism on why you should. It's at LSU. I think LSU's backs are against the wall right now. They need to get a fucking win if they're going to compete and be around, stick around late in the year, especially for the AC SEC championship. If they want to be in those bigger bowl games, LSU's in a must-win situation. Ole Miss, I don't know if they're in a must-win I don't know if they feel it like that uh, with the schedule that they've had. Yeah, they're 6-0, and but are they a lucky 6-0? and They kind of seem like frauds being a number, the number seven team, the, the number seven team in the country. I think our shot of the week, and I'm going to say it right now, we're going to use this game. It's going to be LSU covering minus one and a half against Ole Miss. Yes, they're the favorites, but again, they, we're talking about the number seven team in the country. LSU is unranked. They have a lot to prove. The fucking, did, did LSU play last weekend? Oh, yeah, yeah, Florida. Big one against Florida. It's a big one against Florida after getting mopped by fucking Tennessee. Yeah, in the swamp, you know they're going to come back and try to put on for their fans, bro. Because the fans left. The fans left last time they were at home because Tennessee took over. LSU's going to make a statement in this game. I like LSU. Minus one and a half for our proper wild. Fuck. For our proper wild shot of the week, we're going LSU. Minus one and a half. Two LSU, boys. To LSU. Yeah. Ed Ogeron. Mm. Oh, he goes. Oh, fuck. I'm going to be juiced, boys. Because sneaking back here is a little pumpkin cream cold brew. <laughs> <laughs> Gary came in yesterday to the bus talking about how, like, the proper wallet, like, how the... What? Oh, yeah, I'm rambling. I'm going. I'm juiced right now. I'm, I'm excited. We're undefeated we won all, so yeah, far. We're fucking winning. We're winning this weekend. We've won the last three or four weeks in a row. I say three or four. 
We've won the last four weeks in a row in the NFL. We've won the last three weeks in a row in the NCAA because the week before that we had a bad, we had a down, we had a down time. But it's all right. We're setting the fucking standard. But Gary yesterday coming in was talking about how he loved the proper wash He's like, hey, you should start off taking them in the morning because it does like boost your energy. You don't feel like you're getting some midday crash because my man was dialed in yesterday with the phone calls, the meetings. And he did give credit to, th and this is not a fucking like, yeah, we're selling proper wild left and right. We got 30% off for you anytime you guys want to use the code. It's nice. Fucking saving you. I'm, hey, I'm making you money and I'm fucking saving you money. But G was endorsing proper wild really heavy. And I used it this morning to start off my year 10. My training has been fucking dialed, boys. I'm telling you, training, sauna, conditioning, Gary. Your 10 is ready to go. And it's being, you know, I am now putting proper wall on in my ten, year 10 training regimen is all I'm saying. The last game, Kansas State at number eight, TCU. TCU's favored by three and a half. The over under here is 54. It's moved down. It started off where, Mitch? It started off at 59. Now it's moved down to 54. That's because Kansas State plays good defense. They just had a bye week. They're coming off a lot of big wins. And Kansas State and Illinois, I've said all year long, they're a little dark horse in the gambling game. I'm kind of scared, though, because TCU, they're a good football team. TCU games have hit the over four times. So I think we're, we're going to say over 54. Right now we're going to say over 54. Maybe I'll talk myself into uh, Kansas State by the end of this. TCU has the best offense in the Big 12, averaging 45.8 points per game. That's not a good start for wanting to pick Kansas State. However, they play good defense. We all know that there's no defense in the Big 12. I think Klein's going to have those boys dialed in at Kansas State. Do we go? We're, we're Number one, over 54. Hammer that. That one, we're hitting the fucking over. There is no defense in the Big 12. We are hammering TCU, Kansas State. They're going to come out lighting it up. Taylor, or not Taylor Martinez. Adrian Martinez hasn't thrown a pick all year. Last year, he threw a pick every 35 attempts. I hate saying that because he was on Nebraska doing that in that offense. Now they got him playing. He's seeing things from a whole proper wild level. He's seeing things clearly, energy, focus. He's producing out there. He hasn't thrown a pick in the last, I don't know, 100, 100 I don't know what the stat is. Look it up. Never, yeah, never. He doesn't throw picks. Yeah, I think it's like 150 or 180 he hasn't thrown a pick. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game, and I like. Don't do it. Kansas State plus three and a half. Under. Kansas State plus three and a half. Let's how, fucking ride, Wildcat. How many weeks, though, do we have to figure out that TCU is legit, though? TCU is, man. Listen, I've been on TCU. They made me some money. They made me some coin. But also, yes. Kansas State has. I love Adrian Martinez. I love my boy, Adrian Martinez. Yes, I'm a little biased. Move on. Time to be financially solvent. And we're going to start with our boys, who have, I think, taken a page out of your book since working out. And we got the Falcons at the Bengals. There's only one person that can talk to us about this game, and it's the guy who should be on the squad right now. In due time, brother. Do not rush it. We're patient. We're being aggressive with our patient. Oh, wait. <laughs> we're going to be... We're going to be... Aggressively right, patient? Yeah, that's fucking it. We're going to be aggressively patient until the time comes. We're going to be aggressively patient until the time comes. That was fucking, that's why I need you, brother. And tighten that thing up on the chin. Tighten it up a little bit more. All right. Atlanta is 6-0 against the spread this season. This has only happened 11 times in the history of the NFL. Yes, there's a lot of year 10 chatter. There's a lot of year 10 rumors with Atlanta and playoff Willie. Not payoff Willie. Payoff Willie, we're, we're, making, we're, we're winning some games right now. Playoff Willie, indeed, you might want to look into it coming in November, December. That's all I'm saying. Derek Carr, he was out there. He, he basically gave the entire season credit to me last year. Last Playoff year. Willie had everything to do with last year. <laughs> that Good man guy. came in. And He's going to be cheesing. <laughs> he should be cheesing because Playoff Willie was the man. <laughs> Bengals are 5-1 and one against the spread in their last six home games. That's a little intimidating. But the way Arthur Smith is cheersing with the boys – and drinking buds with the boys after the game, which looks like in the concourse. He's not in the locker room. He's like, hey, we can do it wherever. As long as we rush for over 100 yards and beat the 49ers, we're celebrating with some Bud Lights. The boys in Atlanta have a sneaky good team this year. They're young. They're talented. Arthur Smith has those boys bought in, and you can tell the, the players enjoy playing for him. I love it. And you know what they say? Good teams win, but great teams cover. Atlanta is 6-0 against the spread this year. Their losses, they've only been by single digits. They're in every fucking ball game. They're a good team. They're a fucking good team. But in this situation, they're a great team because great teams cover. We're taking Atlanta Falcons in Cincinnati plus six. The dirty boys are going to fucking run wild. Love that. Love that. Moving on, we've got the Jets at the Broncos. Jets coming off a huge win. Broncos, 
biggest frauds in the league. You said it, brother. They're a bunch of fucking frauds. Take that little dangerous Russell Wilson Sam's from Subway and shove it up your candy asses, boys. Denver's going down at Denver. The question is, which mom's going home with Zach Wilson? Jets, not only plus two, but Jets money line because we got to stop disrespecting them. Uh, the Broncos are 0-3 against the spread at home. The Jets defense is only allowing five yards per play, which is number seven in the NFL. Number seven in the NFL. The Broncos haven't been able to do much at all this season. We saw the boring games. We're fucking over it. Don't overthink it. Jets, money line. Jets, money line at Denver. You know what Jocko says? Keep it simple, stupid. And you did it, baby. Hey, brother, and on top of that, Gary V, he keeps the fucking receipts. The dude travels the games and sits in the fucking stands with the fans. The juice is there, boys. And uh, Coach Sala, it's Sala, right? He's got them rolling. Uh, Jets, J-E-T-S. Love it. All right, moving on to yet another team that you have helped build around. Raiders versus the Texans in Houston. I think this one's pretty obvious. Yeah, I hate seeing that they're one and four right now, especially after the culture that I laid last year going to the playoffs. We were a playoff team last year. Now they're 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 backs against the wall. However, I will say this: they are the best one win team in the NFL. Their combined four wins have totaled fourteen points. Or their four, yeah, their combined four losses have totaled a total of fourteen points. Big brain thinking. I'm telling you, they 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 the Raiders are good. They just gotta. They gotta dial, they gotta just dial some things and they gotta finish fucking games. That's all it is. They had a 17 point lead against the Chiefs. They weren't able to keep it. They were going back and forth the entire game. It was an electric game. They have what it takes, man. They got the pieces. They got the formula. They got you, they fucking they got it. We're we're going. Do we go? Do we go minus five and a half? Or do we do the little teaser? Do we we talked about teasers? Do we do a one and a half point teaser? Can we do that? We do a one and a half point teaser? Awesome. We gonna tease? Talk to us, Mitch. Can we do a teaser? Yeah, so do we, do we want to tell everybody what a teaser is? Yeah, do, do explain what a teaser is because I think I want to do the teaser with the, with the Raiders and the fucking Titans because the boys. So a teaser is, I mean, you, you go into your, your sports book and you see like you can change an alternate line, alternate spread. A teaser is like a little bit of like a parlay where you can go into and change your, your the spread of like, certain, like so many games as you want. You could do like a six-point teaser, five, four, like whatever you want it to be. And it goes into, like, in your favor. So if the Raiders are, they're supposed to be seven and a half right now, right? Mm -hmm. No, no, they're favored by five and a half. So if you want to do, like, a five-point teaser, that would put that line down to 0.5. So that means they only have to cover by 0.5 points. Or as well, if we have, go, like, uh, for a team that's not what favored. a teaser, you got to do it in a parlay, yeah? You don't have to, but it, you get better odds when you do it. Yeah, yeah. So, you, like, like I said, so you do that one, you do the Raiders. And then you do, like, say, a team that's, like, an underdog. Maybe we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, like, say they're, like, plus three. It's a five-point teaser. Then they're plus eight. So the, the teaser moves the line in your favor as to whatever you I like the be. teaser analogy. It basically just means, like, a teaser is move the line. Yep. We're going to do that. We're doing that. Wait, wait, wait. We're going Raiders. Teaser parlay. Do it with the pinky jack. Let them know. Raiders. Teaser parlay with the Titans. One and a half points. So that means the Raiders is minus four and Titans are minus one. That looks good. That sounds yummy to me. Or do we want to do Raiders minus two and a half? A three-point parlay. So you get tight. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take Raiders. We're going to move the line to minus two and a half. So all they got to do is win by field goal. Raiders minus two and a half. We might put the parlay out there. We might not because I still like the Titans minus two and a half. But for this game, Raiders, Texans, we're going to move the line from minus five and a half down to two, down to two and a half. That's what we're going to do for you. They're going to fucking win this game. Well, there's no better time to talk about it than now. The Titans versus the Colts. Huge divisional game. And let's just go ahead and plug it. If you're in Nashville, you better be at that tailgate at Acme Feed and Seed. We're raging. 10 o'clock. Vibes high. Will, you know where this is going. You, we always knew where this was going. It was always Tennessee, as always. Jerry would say. It was always fucking Tennessee. Tennessee minus two and a half. Are we biased? Absolutely. But the facts don't fucking lie. Tennessee owns the Colts. Derrick Henry is back to king form. He's going to make these motherfuckers bend the knee, all of them. Darius Leonard bending the knee. DeForest Buckner bend the knee, brother. Derrick Henry's back. Derrick Henry and this O-line, they're going to run a train on these boys, and they're going to compliment the running game. Was <coughs> 
with some play action passes, some deep balls. I'm telling you, I'm feeling it. The Titans are winning this game, minus two and a half. Jonathan Taylor, Taylor is also out this week, which means the game is on the old man, Matt Ryan. Yes, he had a great game last week, but you know that arm sore. You know that uh, arm, that arm still fucking sore from last week, dude. Oh. Um, the Jags ran for 243 yards against the Colts a couple weeks ago. What do you think Derek's going to do to him? I'm telling you, Titans minus two and a half is damn near a lock, but that is not our lock of the week. We have another fucking lock of the week. We're going to dial in the guy for his five picks. He knows he's on the hot seat, and I'm telling you, he's going to reel that thing back in for us. Let's get to the guy. All right, Willie, I got the text messages. I got the email. I understand. One more losing week, and they're talking about canning the guy. Look, I know what I signed up for. This is big boy business, and I'm here for it. If you want to fade me, if the fans want to fade me, good luck. You're going to be upset this week. I'm starting off Thursday night, Cardinals at home. I get DeAndre Hopkins back. Cliff Kingsbury, the worst coach in the league, is decided to give up call, play calling duties. Love it. I know Call of Duty's got a new game out. Kyler Murray's going to be locked in, ready to go. Saints are missing Lattimore. They're missing Thomas. They're missing Landry. They don't have a quarterback. They got to travel to Arizona. Big win for the Cardinals. And let's move on to my Ravens. I love them. I'm sticking by them. I think this is the week. They're three and three. Player meetings. Players talking to players. Coaches talking to coaches. We're getting it done. The Ravens are going to turn up and blow out the Browns. I love the Ravens. If there's one thing I learned from watching the Bears last week is I'm going against the Bears every week. And especially playing at the Patriots this week, got one of the best defenses. They're going to destroy that offensive line. Hammer the Patriots. I love this game Monday night. I think it's a big spot. I hope Mac Jones doesn't play. The rookie's balling out. Take the Patriots. That's going to be another blowout on Monday night. And here's my two upsets of the week. Jets money line. They're playing. They're hot. Russell Wilson's banged up. That that locker room is a mess. I'm taking the Jets. They're feeling it. They're feeling good. I think Zach Wilson has a huge game. He's on the he's on the tip right now just to have a big game. I'm taking the Jets money line. And then how about the Niners? Chiefs going to the Niners. I love the Niners in this spot. I think the Chiefs drop one. I think they come back to down to reality again. I think that Bills loss really hurts those guys and i think the 49ers take it big five picks i like most of them there's one i'm like dude you're taking the niners at you taking the niners beating kansas city that's tough i love george kittle i love the boys i love the boys in san fran but i don't know if i like that one a whole lot but i think five good picks that we can we can kind of get we, we get behind that we get behind that i have a quick question about the guy what do you got he's been a little bit suspect recently and we've been saying he's on the hot seat several weeks now is this it is th is this chopping block week in a performance based industry like we are in you would assume so i i still believe in him i i guess that's some little like bias that i have towards my guys i'm a loyal dog i like i like giving the guys as many chances as they can get however here's what i'll tell people if he continues to play bad and you don't believe in the guy fade him you still win still an asset we can have yeah we can have we can have winning we can have Pay off Willie, all of our picks, bet the bus. We're in the green every time. The guy might suck. That's another opportunity to stack your parlay and fucking win them all. I, and so God. you can see it two different ways. You can jump on two different sides of the fence on that one. But I think you keep him on. If he sucks and goes 0-5, we know what we're going to do from here on out. We hate to do it, but that we know what we're going to do. At the end of the day, it's a business, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a business. Yeah, and he is an asset no matter how you slice it up. That was well played. Thank you, brother. Let's get to the bet the bus lock of the week. Jack, do you want to lay this one up like me, you, D, Wade, LeBron? You already know what's going to come with this. I mean, Vegas has just been disrespectful to the Giants. And how many weeks is it going to take for them to be proven as those boys? They're, they're not favored in this game. We got the Giants versus the Jags in Jacksonville. What's going on? The Jags are two and four. They're two and four. The Giants are are they are they undefeated? Or are they five and one? They're five, five and one. one. Five and one. How are the Giants underdogs? I don't understand it. Their Giants are plus three. Do you take the points or do we go to the money line? Here, but hang on. Let me let me rattle this off. Brian Dayball, 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 Dayball. He's got those boys rolling. The passion and energy he has. Post game, like when he's fired up with the fans, you know he's rocking proper wild shots before the game. But he's got those dudes rolling. The Jags have the third 
best run defense. So this is a stat for us. Third best run defense, allowing 89 yards per game. So it may be tough for the boy Saquon to get rolling. However, they are very creative with him. He doesn't just have to fucking run the ball. You can get him out of the backfield. You can get him out wide. You can do whatever to get the ball in his hands. Here's another stat for you, though. This is the fucking... This is the... Yeah, this is the heater. This is the absolute fucking bear trap stat. In the last 18 games against NFC opponents, the Jaguars are 0-18. And, and they're also... 2-16 and 16 against the spread during that span. If that doesn't tickle your pickle and get you from 6 to midnight to lock, absolutely fucking lock the Giants, not just plus 3, but we're going money line, boys. This is our bet the bus lock of the week. The line is disrespectful as hell. Brian Dabble, he's going to be celebrating with the Giants fans who go down to Jacksonville, and Jacksonville's going to continue to be 2-5, and five, and they're going to be the same old Jacksonville Jaguars because we believed in them a little bit at the start of the year, but the AFC South runs through Tennessee now. And they're going to beat the shit out of the Colts. But we're going to keep it about the Giants right now. Giants money line at Jacksonville. Lock that fucking in. Uh, do we have anything else, boys? The bet the boys parlay. The bet the boys parlay. Game time decision. You guys know how it works. But there's somebody that's on my radar, that's on our radar, that we were mm -hmm. high-fiving about. And that's Taylor Heineke. The boy who's been on the bus, now he's now the starter in Washington. What we're hoping for, and I'll check the phone right when we get off here. But let's hope that it's like throw for over 0.5 touchdowns. They might, they might, they, we might get that. And if so, he's going to be in our bet the boys parlay. Derrick Henry's back. I like him being in there somewhere. Anybody else? Rob Tunyon. He's been up to something Rob recently. Rob Tunyon, that one killed me last week. I almost did Rob Tunyon over two and a half receptions, and he ended up getting 10, which is the most in Green Bay history, right? Right. Fucking stud. Uh, yeah, Green Bay Packers. Same team. Same team, Mitch. <laughs> But Bet the Boys Parlay is going to be a game time, game time decision. I know I let you guys down last week. Thank God I got to give away five pieces of merch so you guys felt like you got a free bet there. Game time decision. We love you. We appreciate you. I hope you guys left a plethora of fucking comments. We need them. We need you to hit the like, comment, like, comment, like, comment. I know we're getting toward the end of the video, so you guys are probably logging off anyway. But hey, without further ado, boys, may God have mercy on the board because we fucking won't. Thank you and see you next week. Is this the week? This is the week we go undefeated. This is the week. Hey, if we go undefeated this week, and I'm wearing fucking this, it's I'm wearing fucking this. Don't fuck with the Peaky Blinders. Don't fuck. Anyway.